Hello and good morning to you. Uh, the, my name is Lars Hoekland and I'm uh, sitting here in my study getting ready to record the 10th and final video in the series on the Beatitudes. So we've come to the final video. We're just about to wrap it all up and uh, we've gone through, of course, we had two, um, we had one introduction, we had one video about uh, that being blessed what it means to be blessed and then we've been looking at seven of the eight beatitudes and today is the final beatitude and we read in matthew chapter 5 verses 10 through 12 blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now this, of course, is not just one verse like the other Beatitudes, it's three verses, but it's still talking about the same thing. The, the topic here is the same. They're talking about persecution so this is all all these three verses are talking about the same thing the last of the beatitudes uh, the persecuted so we'll be looking at them today as you know in uh, matthew chapter 5 we uh, see the beatitudes the great start of uh, maybe the first and greatest speech that uh, jesus ever made some might disagree, but maybe, but, um, you know, it was a great message that he had and uh, talking about blessedness, that uh, he wanted us to be happy. And, uh, you know, we saw earlier the uh, the contrast of the Old Testament ending with a curse and then Jesus comes with his first and greatest speech, maybe, and he says that, you know, I want you to be happy, but you need to be happy in the right way. You need to be happy about the right things. You, When you are blessed or blessed, you should be blessed by God. You should be seeking blessings that uh, God gives. And that's why when we look at these Beatitudes, we have to remember that this is, these are, spiritual values we're talking about we're talking about spiritual beatitudes when it's talking about poor and spirits not talking about that you can't afford uh, food or a, a house or, or things like this you know uh, when it's talking about poor and spirit it says that we are we are poor we have nothing spiritually speaking spiritually speaking we have nothing to bring to the table okay and um uh, this, of course, I've been saying that these are progressive. The one beatitude leads to the other. And uh, being poor in spirit and realize that you have nothing uh, before God, you're naked and, uh, and destitute before God. This brings you to the next beatitude, which is the mourning part. You know, we mourn over our sin, what we have done. And this causes us to be humble in front of God because God is so great and we are so small. And then we come to the place of the fourth beatitude that we, we hunger and we thirst for righteousness, for God, for God's word. And this uh, makes us be merciful in our lives. We are being merciful to others, just like God wanted us to be. Show mercy to others. God has shown mercy to us. And then we have to show mercy to other people as well. And again, it goes on. So we become pure in heart, which is the sixth beatitude. And uh, when after we have become pure in heart, then we become those peacemakers that God wants us to be. And again, don't think physical, okay? Don't think of physical peace. Don't think about peace in the world. This is talking about spiritual peace. 
that we can have peace even though we're right in the middle of a war okay we have can we can have peace on the inside we can have a spiritual peace and we can make peace with god and we can help others make peace with god okay and if we do all these seven things then we end up being persecuted because the world does not understand and the world does not love the lord and when we uh, when we say what the bible says and we stand as christians we will be persecuted if we follow uh, this path in the beatitudes that uh, jesus gives to us so you can actually say that whoever follows uh, the first six of those it will be those who bring peace and then they will also be persecuted remember jesus said that uh, i do not bring peace but a sword and that's hard to understand unless you realize that this is talking about spiritual things you know it's sp talking about spiritual conflict conflict about um, a, between good and evil and you know strife getting in the middle of families as some people believe and some people do not and they clash together uh, so this is all spiritual and uh, those who are um, being persecuted they will receive a double blessing and if you wonder what i mean then stay on and keep watching this video i'll get back to this okay so I, I have three main points today, okay? I'm hoping again that I won't be too long, but I don't want to make any promises. First, we'll look at the persecution. What is it? Why so? And what types of persecution are we normally talking about? Then number two is the promise. There is a promise to those who are persecuted, okay? And the third and final point is the position of the persecuted. So that's my plan. Let me start straight off and go to the persecuted. And I will start by reading in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. It says there, Let That is, sorry, that is First Timothy. Let me get Second Timothy for you. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 12. I knew there was something wrong even before I started reading it. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, how's that for an encouragement for you? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. This is something we should expect. Now, uh, Paul had experienced this firsthand by himself. The verse before, in 2 Timothy 3, 11, it says, Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. So Paul had plenty of persecution in his life, but God was always faithful to him. And he will be faithful to us if we stand on his word. And if we get persecuted because of it, then God will stand by us. Now, there is an example I heard about a man who got himself a new job, but this was a company that was known for his dishonesty. And, you know, when when you get in that position, that you get into a job where it's kind of expected that you try to cheat people out of money, you, you try to make it the best for yourself, maybe you try to use your shoulders to get through, uh, and climb the ladder, you know, uh, uh, and you you try to rise on the, wh what do you say? Uh, you, you try to climb the ladders of the company and uh, get a higher position, you know, and uh, maybe you're ambitious. And, and and then if you if you have Christian values, it's hard to do that. And this man that uh, I heard about, he had prob problems with that. And we should have problems with that in our lives as well. Now, 
To live for Christ is to go against Satan in the world. To be like Christ, and the word Christian means like little Christs, you know, it's um, supposed to be small Christ, images of Christ. And if we are to be like Christ, we will suffer persecution. Jesus said, they, fought, um, they persecuted me, they will f persecute you. And uh, justice, as the Bible teaches it, is something that is confronting. And uh, you will get confrontation if you stand on the justice of God in your life. There was a uh, great reformer called uh, Savonarola. Savonarola. <laughs> Hard to say, pronounce that. Uh, but Savonarola, he was one of the greatest reformers ever, people say. And he said, it was said about him that when he preached, he said that they said that his word, his words was like thunder. And people who listened to him, they went around the streets half dazed, stunned and speechless because of what they heard. Because he preached the truth. One of the great reformers, you know, he really preached the truth. And because of this, he was burned at the stake. But, you know, his words that he preached had an impact on the people that heard it. Now, let's read a couple of verses here to, just to see that uh, we will suffer persecution. There is no doubt about it. I'll go to First Thessalonians first. Let's see if I can find it here. First Thessalonians chapter 1, sorry, chapter 3, um, and verses 1 through 3, okay, it says uh, 1 through 4, sorry, uh, first Thess uh, 3, wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow labourer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you, and to comfort your comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, verse four. When we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. So Paul knew, and Tim, Timothy knew, or Timotheus, as he's called in the Bible, and um, even the people of uh, Thessalonica, they knew, you know, that uh, they, there would be tribulation, there would be persecution. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> Let me go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 16 and 17. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So we suffer with Christ and will be glorified with Christ. So we will suffer persecution. Another one in uh, Philippians chapter 1 this time. <laughs> and verse 29 and 30. Oh. For unto you <clears throat> it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. So, again and again, we read in the Bible that we are supposed to suffer persecution. And this may seem strange because many of us are not as strong in the faith and living as strongly in the word as we should. Today, Christians are all, um, they're often celebrities. You know, you have politicians that are Christians, you have musicians, you have movie stars, 
you have sports stars, uh, you have Christians who have their own TV stations, uh, you have Christians that have their own fans, you know, and it doesn't seem all that different from the world often when we look at them. <clears throat> and we must admit that we have lowered the standard. We live very often like the world lives, okay? We copy the world's standard instead of trying to copy God's standard. And we make compromises with the world. And we need to remember what uh, Jesus said in Luke chapter 9 and verse 26. Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. These are serious words. We need to stand strong as Christians. We need to follow these Beatitudes in our lives. We need to activate them. We need to live according to them. Now, Jesus uh, had already been persecuted before he came and made this uh, Sermon on the Mount. Um, and in Mark See Mark chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. And also in Luke chapter 6 and verse 7, we read, And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. So they, they were out to get him all the way from the start. Uh, and uh, they, they did persecute him. And uh, it didn't take long before they wanted to take his life. Now, there is a price to follow Jesus. Uh, and many people have discovered this. Now, there were, there were these rock cutters in Ephesus that... Uh, was building a heathen temple and of course when uh, when people got saved then uh, this was a, a great problem for them because then they they didn't want to build heathen temples uh, so that gave them a bit of a dilemma there in in Ephesus you know how are we going to get this built when the, these people are getting saved and don't want to build heathen temples also you have you know businessmen that uh, uh, are expected to be dishonest and uh, take too much money and uh, like I was talking not long ago uh, I mean this could cost them their job and it could cost them uh, the promotion that they maybe want. And uh, uh, sometimes it's hard to, to live as a Christian if you are a businessman. Uh, I know there are several Christian businessmen and uh, they live in a different way than the world's businessmen, you could say. But even housewives, you know, uh, no back-talking or gossiping. Um, uh, seems like that goes against being a housewife, at least if you get together with other ho housewives. I know this American guy that uh, he worked at the brewery here in Bergen in Norway, on the west coast of Norway, and uh, he quit his job at the brewery because he, he felt that as a Christian... He could not be uh, working full time, filling up glass bottles with beer. He thought that that was against the way that he wanted to live. So he actually uh, took the consequences of uh, uh, what he believed. And he said that, oh, I've got to get another job. And of course, God helped him get another job. But... <clears throat> This, I think, is talking about um, what Jesus said about the, the the parable of the sower, when the seed falls on a stony ground. If we go to Matthew in chapter 13, just read a little bit there. Matthew 13. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
verse 20 and 21. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he no, not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. So he doesn't grow. He doesn't take root because uh, he has no root in himself. He's too much, made too many compromises with the world against him. Now, Christians have been blamed for things all through the ages. And uh, in the old days, they used to blame Christians for being cannibals. They, they heard somehow, they heard that uh, those that follow uh, Jesus, they actually, they, they drink blood and they eat flesh. And this, of course, is a misunderstanding about what the, uh, uh, what the Lord's Supper is all about. And they didn't understand this. They just heard that, you know, they're eating this guy called Jesus. It's terrible. Don't want anything to do with it. And also, uh, they were blamed for burning Rome. And uh, they heard that uh, God would burn the earth with flames. So they said, well, if there's a fire, I'm sure it's these Christians that have done it. And the Christians have always been blamed for many things. Uh, but this is not... Uh, primarily the persecution that we are talking about today because uh, we say there are, there are mainly two types of persecution uh, it's a physical persecution and it's a verbal persecution now when you have a physical persecution of course your life and health is in danger if you have a verbal con um, persecution then it's more more name calling and back talking and gossiping and that kind of stuff, and people talking badly about you. And uh, I'd like to go to First Corinthians in uh, chapter four <clears throat> and see what Paul wrote in verse nine and ten. He writes there, "For I think that God hath set forth us apostles last, as it were appointed." to death, for we were made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Uh, we are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. So, uh, the um, this is uh, talking about, you know, that... Uh, we are willing to be fools. We're be willing to be ridiculed. We're willing to to suffer these things, you know, to live the way that uh, God wants us to live. Now, there was a something they used to do in the old days uh, when uh, the the Jews won a victory. They would, uh, and also the Romans would do this. They would take their their army after a victory and they would uh, march through the town and uh, first you would uh, see the army uh, with its spoils you know they would carry the spoils with them and last in the procession uh, there would be the POWs the prisoners of wars that was uh, coming ready for execution uh, maybe even uh, at maybe at Colosseum, you know, depending on if you were, they were in Rome or where they were. But uh, this is the way the world treated Christians in the old days. And even today, there are people who die all over the world for their faith. Now, I'm fortunate to live in Norway. I don't have to be, uh, I don't need to be afraid to be killed because of uh, what I believe. Uh, but uh, there are places in the world where it's still that. Maybe they don't uh, send them to Colosseum, but there are some people that lose their house. They put fire to their houses, and sometimes they, they get killed because they're Christians. And uh, it's a serious thing to say that they're Christian in, in some person, in, in some places. But, uh, uh, you know, 
Paul, he was one that we wrote, uh, that we read about here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. He says that we are fools for Christ's sake. So he was willing to be a fool. But Paul also did brag. And, uh, you know, what did he brag about? Let's go to 2 Corinthians in chapter 11, verse 23. And read maybe through 27. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labours, more abundant in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Now, this doesn't sound like a very nice and comfortable life, does it? But Paul was happy about these things. He was happy that he was worthy to suffer for Christ. Now, uh, we are not called to promotion, but we are called to suffering. We can expect suffering. Let me read a little bit in First Peter. First, uh, go to chapter 3 and uh, find verse uh, 13. And I'll read through verse 18, I think. For the eyes of the Lord are over on righteousness over the righteousness, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Uh, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if, if ye be followers of that which is good? But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. Some people say, well, if I'm, if I'm suffering, I'm not happy. But you can be happy. Paul had learned this, and Peter learned it too. But if, but and, but and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. Be not afraid of their terror, ne neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evil doers they may be ashamed that falsely ac accuse you uh, good conversations in Christ for it is better if the will of god be so that ye suffer for well being uh, well doing sorry than for evil doing for Christ also uh, this is verse 18 for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Quickened, of course, means being made alive. So here, <clears throat> here we see we can expect persecution, you know, but it is good to be worthy to suffer for Christ. Uh, if we go to the next chapter, First Peter chapter 4, let me read a few verses there as well. Verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange things happen unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of, glo of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Now here we come on to something that we will talk about in a little bit. 
Also verse 16, if yet if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on on this behalf. And verse 19, wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit keeping of the souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Okay, that's uh, first Peter for you. And what I want you to see here in these verses is that when we are hated and persecuted, the animosity is not really against us. It's against Christ. It's against God. Now, remember Jesus' words, words in John chapter 15. Tremendous chapter, John chapter 15. Uh, there is a study on that uh, if you want to do it. Um, but um, John 15, let's see verse uh, 18 through uh, 21. It means I need to move that there. Uh, yeah, 18. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would not love, uh, sorry, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. So uh, these were some of uh, Jesus' last words here on, on earth. And it is so important, you know, to realize that if people make fun of you because of you are a Christian, then really they're making fun of God. Find a comfort in that and, you know, rejoice that, you know, hey, I must be living like a Christian because they're, they're making fun of me. I must be living like a Christian because they're, um, <laughs> they are saying bad things about me. So this is important. Well, let's go over to main point number two, the promise. The promise is the kingdom of heaven. We saw that in Matthew. Let me go back to Matthew chapter 5. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, uh, interesting. Now, compared to what we have been promised in the Bible by God through Jesus or through uh, the apostles, then um, even martyrdom is really considered a, a small price. Jesus promises us a double blessing when he talks to you and says when. And uh, it's not all the time, you could say. But uh, we'll have a look at this. The, the, the reward that we are promised is great. Let me go back to First Thessalonians and see if I get the right chapter this time. First <laughs> uh, Thessalonians, now it's chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men ye we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and the, of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were ensamples, or examples, to all that believe in Macedonia and uh, Achaia. So we are... And samples, it says, and that means examples, samples, patterns, or models, uh, and, and we are that for others. And um, so, so the word came in, in power and in the Holy Ghost, 
And, you know, uh, we have so much through the Lord uh, that uh, we have to remember that uh, there is uh, so much to win for all eternity. And persecution, as I say, it proves that we're doing right. If we don't experience resistance in our lives, we must check what direction we're going. I normally say that uh, if if your boat is going through smooth sailing all the time, then you need to check your compass and see that you're going in the right direction. So, but what is this kingdom? Well, actually, it's three things, okay? It's talking about the kingdom now. It's talking about the kingdom in uh, in the millennium is talking about eternity okay so we have blessings here and now now <clears throat> and now of course the kingdom is inside us uh, in the millennium the the kingdom is here on earth and in eternity it's uh, <laughs> it's in heaven it's uh, it's also uh, on the, in the new heaven and the new earth. But we have blessings all over here. We have blessings here and now. Even though our lives are hard, we normally do get blessings in our lives. Joseph was sold as a slave. He was thrown into prison. And he ended up being the prime minister of Egypt. So he ended up uh, getting loads of blessings. Uh, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, but he was the king's most trusted advisor. So he also got blessings. And us, we get blessings every day, don't we? Actually, we're, we are so well off, we are so comfortable that uh, we don't always realize that we're being blessed every day. But, you know, we also, we, we share everything and uh, that makes us... Uh, blessed and, and richer now there are blessings in the millennium uh, and if i go to revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 it says and i saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of god and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Imagine that, living with Christ, reigning with Christ for a thousand years. What a blessing that must be. And uh, the last one, we're talking about blessings in eternity. Well, just start reading in chapter 21 of Revelation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And it just goes on and on. It's talking about this uh, uh, this eternity. I recommend that you read it and highlight it if you want to. Um, uh, there are blessings in eternity, I tell you. No more. No more crying, no more disease. Um, it's going to be wonderful and Jesus will be there. So it will be wonderful indeed. Now the Beatitudes starts and ends with um, the promise of the kingdom. We read it before and here we read it again. So this is what I'm talking about, a double blessing. We are being promised the kingdom twice now um, in christ you can take part of the kingdom both now and forever so it's like a it's like a double blessing now you can have christ living inside you you can have the kingdom of god living inside you and in forever you'll be living in the kingdom of god um, and you have like a double blessing. No matter what uh, the world does, they cannot change any of this that uh, God has said will happen. Well, final point 
three, and I'm not going to be long on this. What is our position? I said we'll be talking about our position. All right. Now, on going back to the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew and chapter 5. Um, when we go on, we read verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the, if the salt has lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? Is it henceforth good for nothing to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men? And then the verse 14 says, Ye are are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So, uh, what's our position? Our position is that we are to be the salt and we are to be the light in this world. And, uh, of course, this is another message, okay? I probably should do a message on the salt and the light. Uh, I know many, many Christians who are very, concerned about uh, being the salt and uh, being the light of this world and uh, we are supposed to do that that's what jesus said there on the sermon on the mount that we should do that and uh, we must be active in the world if you read on verse uh, 15 and 16 neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but in uh, on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we're not supposed to hide our light. We're supposed to put it on a candle stand so it can shine all over the place. We're supposed to be active. We're supposed to show our light. We're supposed to show the world that we are Christians. And then, of course, when people attack us, they attack Christ. I did find these scripture verses, but I'll just mention them to you for time's sake. Galatians 6.17 and Colossians 1.24. Uh, okay. Now, Jesus has two reasons for us, okay, um, to be active in the world and, and, to, and to follow these uh, Beatitudes, okay? First is that our reward in heaven is great. Let me go to, let me see, if I can find James chapter 4. James chapter 4 and verse 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. So, of course, the conclusion here uh, of that we have little time is that uh, we need to be busy gathering treasures in heaven. Not on earth, because we can't take it with us, but we need to gather treasures in heaven. Uh, and also, the persecuted people, uh, or the prophets, they, they who went before us, uh, they are in heaven, you know, and uh, will be in good company when uh, we follow these things and uh, we end up in in heaven. Okay, so we want to be in heaven because our, our time here is short, and uh, we we need to be in heaven uh, because um, we'll be in good company. And okay, talking about the persecuted prophets. Well, what even more important is that uh, Jesus will be there and we'll be able to spend time with him and see his, his, the, where he had his nails in his hands and uh, the spear in his side. So uh, it'll be just uh, amazing to be in heaven. I would like to finish off by reading a few verses uh, and this is uh, now the end of this uh, series about the Beatitudes. I will read from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 36 through 38. And it says here, And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, 
were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about, sorry, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Now, all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. You know, um, it says that uh, the world was not worthy of the prophets that was killed. You know, if you are a good Christian who stands on the word of God, then the world is not worthy of you. And we look forward to the time when we will be home in heaven. Because our home is not in this world. Our home is in heaven. And I hope that you who are watching this video also have your home in heaven. If not, please come to Jesus. Receive him as your personal savior. And uh, I know that uh, he will never turn you away. So uh, please do. We want to rejoice in heaven together. And uh, I assure you it's much better than the alternative. So this is the end of this uh, series. I hope you have enjoyed it, at least parts of it. Um, I have not decided which um, series to do next, but uh, it, shortly I will start on another video series. So uh, God be with you. Until then.